How's it going everyone? Ben here and today I'm going to be talking to you about my experience applying to medical school as a transgender person and kind of the roadblocks and also pluses that I came across with during the entire interview and acceptance process. I'm going to be really direct and honest and not try to sugarcoat anything because I do still think that being openly trans when you are applying to medical school can be a bit of a risk. I personally, when I applied two and a half years ago, decided to be only open to certain schools I felt confident being open with, but also remain very closeted to other schools that I felt like would discriminate against me for being trans. Now, the way I decided which schools to actually be open with was pretty basic and simple what i did is i went to that school's mission statement but i also checked their non-discrimination policies and i made sure that they protected gender identity or uh, sexual orientation and in their mission statement it is a more liberal leaning school so the school's mission would have some sort of indication of social justice work or making change in the medical system i de definitely tried to stay closeted with schools that had more traditional values when it came to their students who applied to become a doctor there. Now, if you're wondering why would anybody who's transgender need to hide who they are when it comes to applying to medical school because medicine should be a field that's open and accessible to anyone to get into, that's not necessarily true. I have talked extensively about the amount of discrimination trans people face in the medical system and I don't even think I experienced the worst of it all. I acknowledge that I do have some privileges that give me better, I guess, rights in the system than other people, but definitely medicine as a whole is a very transphobic field still to this day, even though there are advances to incorporating trans inclusiveness in the curriculum by a number of medical schools in the country. So did my plan of only revealing who I am to the schools that had those non-discrimination policies and mission statement actually work? Well, turns out it's more complicated than that. I realized when I went to my interview for my dream medical school, which was Duke University, and I'm specifically naming them because I hope that someone from Duke administration sees this video and realizes that even though that their administration thinks that they are trans inclusive, it doesn't really include the people who are interviewing the students. Also, whether or not I actually came out to the school, I made sure I asked questions of whether or not they had student-run clinics that catered specifically to LGBTQ populations, or if they had a gay straight or LGBTQ alliance because that was very important to me because even if I didn't come out as trans during the admissions process, I was definitely gonna come out as trans eventually and I needed an atmosphere where I felt included and if it just included something as small as a little part of my life where I could be openly who I am and not feel judged for it, that would give me the drive to do well in school. So I definitely needed that. So I made sure I asked those questions. And eventually I realized when I did ask those questions, it opened up more dialogue to talk about trans inclusiveness within those institutions. So Duke University, obviously being my dream medical school, I knew that I wanted them to see my whole authentic self. And it was a huge plus that their mission statement and non-discrimination policy specifically showed that LGBTQ people would be included and even regarded as an underserved minority uh, in the student population. So I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to come out as trans uh, when I interview there. And luckily I did get an interview. It was a big deal for me and my family and I got it pretty early. So I went and flew all the way to Durham, North Carolina from Atlanta, Georgia in spring of 2018. 2017? Yeah, uh, in spring of 2017. And I was excited. This is where it gets kind of crazy, but during with during one of my interviews with an interviewer at Duke, uh, he asked me about my life and I ended up coming out to him saying that I used to, I, I was once a sister to my twin sister, but now I'm a brother. And immediately that's when I realized I made a huge mistake of coming out because he, scowled at me and it was it was not even like something that was subtle he like scowled scowled at me and i was like 
oh shoot, my chances at this school are like completely gone. And I, I wasn't wrong. I ended up not even getting an acceptance at Duke. I got waitlisted and I really do think part of me getting waitlisted at Duke was because of that experience with that interviewer who really didn't take well to me coming out to him. And um, I think about it a lot. You know, I lost my chances at my dream medical school just because I was being my authentic self. And I feel like anyone who is not trans doesn't have that experience. Usually people who are authentic often get heralded, often get praised for being their true authentic self. But I definitely didn't experience that when I was that way. That's when I came to realize that having inclusive language on paper at an institution doesn't necessarily correlate with what the people in the institution actually believe. It was a big reality check for me because whether or not some place said that, hey, we love trans people, they're accepted here, not everyone in those institutions, and there will be people in power in those institutions as well who do not like trans people. Luckily, I didn't get my decision from Duke all, all up until May of the following year. So that whole entire experience didn't really affect how authentic I was to myself at the other schools I applied to. Actually, there were schools that didn't include trans inclusiveness in their written language, but I had a great experience talking to the students and faculty and interviewers there where they were trans inclusive. Actually, Tulane University, one of the schools that didn't, that doesn't include transgender people in their non-discrimination agreement, had an interviewer who was very welcome to my identity and even told me that he was going to try his very best to advocate for me when he does present my case as a student applying to Tulane for their admissions board. And I ended up getting an acceptance at Tulane. And I remember just feeling so welcomed there. I guess my biggest advice when it comes to a trans person applying to medical school, definitely gauge the environment that you're in when you do go interview, not necessarily look at what they're looking for on paper because not everyone in positions of power feel the same way. And to honestly realize that you are going to be fighting in a system that doesn't want you there. I know it's getting better, but has it really gotten better really? Medical schools can talk about how they have all of these programs to treat transgender patients well, they have transgender education resources, but how are individuals in that institution taking care of trans people and its trans students? Because that says a lot too. My current medical school that I attend did include protections for trans peeper, peeper. <laughs> protections for trans people in their non-discrimination agreement but also when I came out I was showered with love I was showered with I was showered with acceptance but that only came at the faculty level when it came to my own classmates I didn't feel the same way I did have classmates that accepted me that used my pronouns correctly but I also experienced a lot of backlash within my own student body so that was a really interesting experience for me and I can talk about that experience in a later video. Anyways, I didn't really want this video to be inspiring or like letting anyone down who wants to apply to medical school authentically. Do what feels right for you and I definitely am going to say whether or not the same experience happens in residency, I am honestly going to be my authentic self. I'm going to be loud and trans and if they don't like it, I don't want to be there. Unfortunately, when I was applying to medical school, I was in a position in my life where I didn't have a lot of power, where I had so much to lose. I was a first generation immigrant, the first in my family to graduate from college, and I had a lot wearing down on me that I felt like I had to hide who I was and that I couldn't give up any opportunity for me to do better for my life and for my family. But now, I know that I'm going to match somewhere. So I'm going to go somewhere where I feel accepted and that they are proud to have me there. So my last piece of advice is if you do have the privilege 
to be your authentic self in whatever professional setting to be as loudly trans as possible take it use it because you need to expose people to what it means to be transgender so that they can get over their biases because most of those biases are riddled with stigmatization that needs to be put away and they need to realize what trans people are capable of. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got something out of it. I hope you share it with someone who needs to hear some of the things I talk about. Be sure to like, subscribe, share this video, follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and I'll see you on the next one. This has been